Hello and welcome to another TLDR UK video. In this one, we're going to be taking another look at the Northern Ireland Protocol, something we've discussed a few times on this channel because of the difficulties that it and Brexit more generally has been causing on the Irish border and in the Irish Sea. So in this video, we'll explain why it's causing trouble for businesses, the recent reports of the UK government's force majeure argument, and why a solution is in the government's immediate interests. Before we start, if you want to support the channel, consider subscribing or backing us on Patreon. In return for your Patreon support, you can get a whole bunch of perks, from early access to videos and the ability to vote on video topics, to exclusive TLDR live streams, behind the scenes posts and your name in videos. Find out more about what you can get by clicking the link in the description. Anyway, let's get started by taking a look at the recent controversies surrounding the Northern Ireland Protocol. We've talked about the NI Protocol a fair bit before, most recently in this video, so we're not going to do a full explainer again here. All you need to know to understand the recent controversy is that the Protocol included grace periods for certain items. During this period, trade between Great Britain and Northern Ireland, which remains in the EU's customs union, would be relatively simple. It included a three-month grace period for soil, parcels and some food, a six-month grace period for certain chilled meats, and a 12-month grace period for medicines. Essentially, during these grace periods, businesses won't need to do as much paperwork as they would if any other third country was importing into the EU single market. But after the grace periods, businesses will be required to present a whole load more paperwork if they want to continue trade with Northern Ireland. Anyway, in early March, with that April 1st deadline fast approaching, the UK government realised that neither they nor businesses were ready for the new paperwork requirements. So the UK government unilaterally extended the grace periods for food, parcels and soil, changing the rules without the EU's agreement. Now, this is clearly a bit cheeky to say the least, because if you sign a contract with another party, you can't just add other bits later willy-nilly without asking them. As you might expect, the EU started legal proceedings against the UK, claiming that this unilateral decision was illegal under international law. You might be wondering why the UK wanted to break international law rather than just doing some paperwork. Well, it's largely because the unionist community in Northern Ireland were getting pretty annoyed. From Percy Pigs to cancer treatment, the Northern Ireland Protocol has been creating a divergence between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. If this already annoyed the unionist community, and fair enough, imagine how much more annoyed they'll be when the grace period ends, meaning even more paperwork and even more divergence. Anyway, in response to the legal proceedings, the UK government did two things. Firstly, they proposed a four-phase timetable for these new post-grace period checks, which was leaked to The Guardian and the BBC on Monday. The timetable is a fair bit more relaxed than the original grace periods, with phase two apparently lasting all the way until January 2022, and no proposed time limit on phases three or four. The second thing the government did, according to a report on Monday from RT News, was argue that their unilateral extension wasn't illegal because of force measure. Force majeure is a legal concept that allows a party to default on a contract if there's some massive, unforeseeable event that affects the contract. Force majeure only applies if the event is 1. Outside control of both parties, 2. Outside of foreseeable risks allocated between parties in the agreement, and 3. Affects the performance of the agreement. To give a basic example, if I bet my brother £10 that I could beat him in a race, but then I get struck by lightning midway through, and for some petty reason we decide to take it to court, I might appeal to force measure to avoid paying him. Unfortunately for the UK government, the Irish border meets none of these three conditions. First, they were controllable, in that the UK could have aligned, even temporarily, with the EU's SPS rules, which would have cut 90% of checks. It's fair enough that they didn't want to, but that's not the same as not being able to. Secondly, they were foreseeable, which is why there was this whole discussion around grace periods last December. And thirdly, this doesn't affect the performance of the protocol, because it has its own force majeure clause for when things go wrong in Article 16, which the UK government can unilaterally trigger in the event of a serious economic, societal or environmental difficulty. 
You might remember Article 16 from January, when the EU nearly triggered it to stop vaccines being exported to Northern Ireland. So that's the problem. Essentially, the UK government can't simultaneously keep the Unionists happy while sticking to its obligations under the Northern Ireland Protocol. What's the solution? Well, there's basically two easy solutions. The first would be for the UK to align with EU rules. As we said earlier, aligning with SPS rules alone would mean 90% fewer checks. The other option, and the one that David Frost was pushing in his op-ed in the Mail on Sunday last week, is for the EU to be a bit more relaxed about checks and move to a risk-based model. Checks on GBNI goods are apparently equivalent to 20% of all checks within the EU, and that's with grace periods. This certainly sounds a little excessive, but the problem is that even if it's true, a risk-based model requires mutual trust, and there's a fair premium on that at the moment. Anyway, those are the two solutions. Either the EU relaxes about the integrity of its single market, or the UK relaxes its post-Brexit sovereignty obsession. The last thing we should mention in this video is that it's imperative that some solution is reached soon. The Unionist community in Northern Ireland is currently not happy at all. The Democratic Unionist Party have already sacked their leader, Arlene Foster, because she signed off on the Northern Ireland Protocol and replaced her with Edwin Poots. Poots is a creationist Christian who believes that the world is 6,000 years old, doesn't think that gay men should be allowed to donate blood or adopt, and once proposed that women should pay for caesareans in order to encourage natural birth. Poots won on the promise of a more robust campaign against the Northern Ireland Protocol, and this is particularly worrying because the Northern Ireland Assembly elections are next year, so two destabling things could happen here. Firstly, Poots could turn the election into a de facto referendum on the Northern Ireland Protocol, which would get ugly. And secondly, while Poots might win back some voters from the more robustly unionist TUV, it's at least possible that his social views might scare away some younger voters to the Alliance Party. If this happens, then Sinn Féin could plausibly end up being the largest party in Stormont. And while we're not going to go into the details of Irish history here, basically a Sinn Féin First Minister would really stress Unionist consent in Northern Ireland. And while some might support that, it would certainly get messy. Essentially, political stability in Northern Ireland demands a solution to this whole Northern Ireland protocol shenanigans ASAP. And while in our view there's two easy solutions, it's not going to be easy for the UK and EU to agree on either. Which solution do you favour? Should the EU reduce protections for its single market? Or should the UK begin to align with the EU more? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.